just quiet. So here we go, Fatigue Mage versus Handlock. Pretty sure that this one does end up favoring the Fatigue Mage. And if he if he takes this match, he's going to have a hard time winning uh, the third match now because I think the Priest does feel like it's really strong against Paladin nowadays. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you have to have a clear head going into a, a Freeze Mage matchup. Because decisions can get a little bit tough. The game can get a little bit long. Fatigue Mage because your main win condition is your opponent's fatigue. Uh, but also because it can fatigue you and your opponent. As well as spectators, casters, viewers, bystanders alike. Just very fatiguing altogether. I feel tired listening to you explain it. Jeez. I know. The game hasn't just even talking started, about man. Fatigue Mage just made Relax. me... Relax. Have, have some fun, man. Fatigue Mage. <laughs> All right, TJ. Well, if you don't want to cast this, I'll cast this one alone. Jeez. No, man. I'll, I'm just going to bring all the excitement that I can possibly can to this next game. You promise? You're not even ready for it. I am ready. I'm ready for all the energy that you can push out. Okay. <clears throat> the the Mage versus Handlock is... Um, I, I like this matchup personally for Fatigue Mage because uh, there's a lot of ways that you can abuse like the... Uh, the the draw of it like the the Colite Oracle yeah the big problem with Handlock though sometimes is if they rush out like a big minion and you just don't happen to have the removal but Reyna does run two polymorphs he's got two Doomsayers so if that gets silenced he also has ways to like navigate through that he's got duplicate on taunts he can uh, echo Medivh his big game hunters and whatnot so my I, two my control techs as well right I think I think it's just a very strong deck against it because of all the removal it has access to and the ways to copy it yeah so Lonely link he knows what kind of mage this is right so what's the best way to go about it uh be conservative with your you have to be either be super aggressive I think you should be really aggressive. I think you yeah, should um, go as hard as you can for like a turn four play. If you had the opportunity to go for like an Ancient Watch of Silence, I think you should do it. Anything that you can kind of keep the pressure on, because yeah. that's what they just uh, this deck struggles with, like decks that can burst them down. Raynad ended the turn before pinging his opponent, <laughs> or maybe he didn't want to play around. He wanted to play around Molten Giants. We'll find out if he just, pings him this turn. Just threw out the whoops just for uh, okay. mind games. Uh, well, so I guess he is playing around uh, the lowering the health of Molten Giants. Yeah. yeah. Well, he does pick up the Mountain Giant here, so... Very cute. I guess he can tap and then coin out something. Hmm? Still holding on to the coin. Okay. Yeah. Well... So now that he can force the overdraw with the Cold Light Oracle. Jaraxxus Coin Inferno <laughs> is the... Not not that practical in this matchup. But, no, you said it's the strongest play in the game. Quoting, direct quote. <laughs> Frodan, 20, 2014, I think. Strongest play in the game. It's a really sick play for sure. It's also the most exciting play in the game. No, it's definitely really. something that you don't think about, but... Being able to put out the Inferno with Drax is pretty nuts. Yeah. A, a lot of... Uh, you're a, a, a coin is undervalued kind of guy. <clears throat> right? Um. Maybe. I don't know. I, I think the coin is undervalued and overvalued sometimes. People hold on to it too long. Some people don't hold... Some people don't care about it enough, etc. I've got the beast in my side. Big Game Hunter going to snipe this thing down, right and if time. I'm the Fatigue Mage, <coughs> I'm going to try to kill that thing as fast as I can so he can't copy it whatsoever. Yeah, duplicate Echo. You want to get rid of this as quick as possible. I'd consider Hellfire in here. I mean, there's not really going to be much else that you're going to use it for. He's got to play something here. Because mm. now, Raynad can uh, Doomsayer and Echo of Medivh. Oh my goodness. That's a really strong play. Because you collect it and you destroy the board, you keep the board clean, right? Or am I missing something? Is that like too, is that too liberal with your echo? I don't think so. I mean, last game he did it with a 
uh, Mind Control Tech and Earthring Farseer. And I think BGH and Doomsayer in this matchup have a lot Super stronger valuable. of... Uh, yeah, they're more valuable than what Mind Control Tech and Earthring Farseer were the last time he decided to use it. There's an, uh, an option to be like greedy here and play yeah. Sludge Belcher. Colette Oracle makes him overdraw <coughs> a lot. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's at nine, so it'd make him, over, it'd make him burn two cards. <clears throat> but your mana usage isn't as clean. Again, this deck is just full of pretty tough decisions. It's well, hard to decide when to get value out of. I like this one a lot. Yeah. Second big game hunter gives you flexibility to use uh, against giants. Um, I, <laughs> I really like that Reyna's refusing to attack. Because it just refuses to play into Molten Giant. He, like, he's never attacked the face. All damage done by the Warlock has been to himself. It doesn't play into his win condition. There's no, Why is there a reason to do damage? It's a good point. I don't think you're ever going to kill a Handlock with just straight up damage as a... Uh, the only damage you have teammate. are Frost Bolts. Yeah, right. that's not much reach. And later in the game, when you get to Fatigue, uh, you're either forcing the Warlock to life tap every turn to be able to get into Molten Giant range, which gets him closer to Fatigue, or later in the game, if he stays healthy, by the time he gets to Molten Giants, he'll be taking big chunks of Fatigue. So he has to make decisions and awkward turns where he has to play Molten Giants and heal up to be able to survive the fatigue next turn, and by that time, the mage already has him right where he wants him. <laughs> Such an ugly scenario. <clears throat> you just kill? You just let your doom say Do you just let it go? You still have to play a minion so that way your uh, hand doesn't overdraw. Just let it go. <laughs> let it go. So now you, now you code Light Oracle, right? Because you're, you're overdrawing. Oh, man. What is Two cards, mill? actually. What do you think he's going to mill? Molten Giant and Twilight Drake. Sunfury Protector. My hand is oh, Iron Beak Owl is pretty good. So that way he can't um, silence his Doomsayer. Yeah. I think that's a pretty uh, effective card in this matchup, too. Yeah. He's going to lose two cards, by the way. He's going to yeah, lose yeah, the one. I, that that's why I said draw. Uh, Mole Giant and some Fear Protector. He feels comfortable dropping a second Doomsayer. I think it's a little unnecessary. I think uh, Death Lord is more than okay here. Uh, well, second Doomsayer, um, <coughs> you're forcing your opponent to play cards. Oh. Yeah, he saw that his opponent wasn't willing to part with some cards. Yeah. Oh! Dr. Boom! Oh, no. That hurts. That is. Now, what's so funny is that people used to say burning cards don't really matter until it goes to the bottom of the yeah. deck. But this deck wants you to get to that stage. Okay. Farseer being okay. It could If it pulled like a Molten Giant, you'd yeah. be like, oh, well, I didn't attack those faces for so long. Yeah. I think Molten Giant might have been pretty decent there. I mean, either way, well, if <laughs> yeah. it pulled something. It would have been, 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 been pretty decent. Pretty decent. Yeah. Well, what other creatures there? He has mountain one mountain giant, twilight drakes, and molten giants. Those are the only creatures he has left in his deck right now. Oh no, and taunts. Yeah, he's I got. Guess he should. He's got sun fury protectors. True. Um, he probably has another ancient watcher. The game is still quite young. Um, I, th I bet they're both like about fifteen cards in. Well, not both of them. Maybe a little bit deeper for the handlock. He's been tapping plus the Death Lords. The game is young. <clears throat> the game is young. And full of fatigue. And full of joyous fatigue. Well, there's a Mountain Giant. I mean, it's a threat, but you know it's just going to get There's Mountain killed. Giant, but there's Big Game Hunter. Yeah. Rand also put a Black Knight in his deck, too. It's a very heads up inclusion because Black Knight's starting to get really good considering how many druids and taunts there are mm -hmm. nowadays. And even in a lot of decks, you can get value out of it, like with Sledge Belchers. Right, that was the case when Nax Ramus first came out. But then people started fading Black Knight out because they wanted to have more flexible spots for Dr. Boom. Yeah. Um, be proactive about threats. <coughs> I think it's giant time. Yeah, it's just... Well, 
No. Oh. Can I get Hellfire? Okay. Well, one thing I advise against is coining out the Mountain Giant. You can coin, <laughs> you can coin out the Sludge Belcher. Oh, do you advise against it? I do advise against Everybody's it. Everybody's been in that point in their Hearthstone career. The first time they played Hand A lot of people have done it before. Where they tried to I'm coin not, out the Mountain Giant. I'm not proud to say that I did try that at one point. a natural part of everybody's Hearthstone experience. You try and execute your own Sylvanas, and then you try and coin out your Mountain Giant. Kappa. Um, so, I wonder if Rain Knight's gonna uh, just simply drop, like, a Mind Control tech this turn. Mm. Is he at 10 cards, or is he at 9 cards? Too? He's at 9. He's at 9 cards? Yeah, okay, he so he can, he can actually hold. Yeah. Well, he'll just pass. Well, Ping the zombie show. So he's okay. So let's start counting down. He's removed. He killed one giant with the BGH. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no Twilight Jakes remove uh, shown yet. So he's got two polymorphs that he needs to hold on to. And so he's got three removals for four, th five threats right now. Uh, Plus a Black Knight on top of that. Okay. Oh, that's right. Black Knight's also pretty good. The big scary thing I think is Jaraxxus. Yeah. Mm. In fact, oh my gosh, actually, that's right. So does that mean Lonely Link should Jirax this next turn? <clears throat> you know what? Is it, is it is like playing Jirax is the fastest way you can kill a Fatigue Mage? Yeah. And he won't get to Molten Giants, but at this point, Raynad's been playing around it so much, I think you do have to Jirax this. Yeah. Because 6 6 can be really problematic, because it happens every turn. Can't get BGH. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, you use polymorphs on that. He's got a pretty big hand already. It's not the best post Jirax's hand, but I mean, he has like an antique Gilbot, Shadow Flame. Not that Shadow Flame is that useful in this matchup, but. So now Raynan has to sort of be proactive about it because there's just too many six sixes that will be pure. Yeah. Well, there's a chance that <clears throat> you can get through all eight of Jirax's hands charges but yeah it does have to be proactive here and he also has to worry about well no he did not too much dying uh who lonely link yeah he's fine yeah this deck doesn't run fireballs yeah frostbolt like you said earlier is the only reach So he can clear the board through a few different ways. Utilizing Dark Bomb seems to be a nice way to pace himself, so that way he doesn't uh, just throw away his Shadow Flames. I still would have liked to see him toss out a Mountain Giant, though. Yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, he's worried about overextending on the board in case of the Doomsayer that he knows is there. But he does have an Owl, so maybe not so much. And he really wants to preserve his 6-6s six here, because those are going to be the primary way he pushes through. Well, I think, uh, I think he might be looking to use Black Knight here. I think he needs to get past the Taunt. Yeah. It's like all of a sudden he's in a scenario where he needs to rush, doesn't he? Or maybe he feels like he might have an opportunity to just stall if he just draws a freeze mm. with Doomsayer. How do you rush, though, with this deck? I don't know. There's, There's so many turns before Jaraxxus starts decking out. There's just nothing... Uh... Let's see if he draws his second... No. Th there's nothing this, that can stand up to the 6-6s. Six yeah. So like every single turn, there's just not anything that he can answer the 6-6s six with other than... I was also... Big card removal. Yeah, I was a little bit um, questioning like why he was using his... Uh, his health so liberally, but I forgot that Le Lonely Link also has, uh, he also has an antique heal bot. What to do? So. What to do? Now going back to the last turn, I think that uh, even though overextending could be an issue, right? He's technically dead to a fireball, frostbolt. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mountain Giant 
is going to just become harder and harder to use as these turns go on. Because you can't effectively make it cheaper with card draw anymore, with the hero power. Okay, well, he's starting to run a little bit thin on removal. So, what could happen eventually is uh, Lonely Link runs out of cards, but I don't think that'll be the case. His, his hero power is just too strong. Like, from here, I feel like it's almost easy cruising, because eventually Major will run out of cards, right? Yep. Well, uh, let's see. He doesn't have an easy way to knock off this Black Knight without trading in a lot of his minions. I mean, he can defend her, Marcus. Yeah, but I don't know if that's the kind of thing you want to do right now. Yeah. Whoa. Oh my gosh, if Raynat picks up a second Frostbolt, that's bold. He's dead. That is very bold. Whoa. Oh man. Well, we can be sure anti heal so, bots going to come out yeah. next turn. Yeah, definitely. And then probably it's just going to Doomsayer and Hero Power phase. He's also got Flame Strike afterwards, so... Well, this is one of those rare situations where Molten Giant is playable. Yeah, no kidding. So he can anti heal bot, Hero Power, and Silence. Have a pretty crazy board. The Infernal is also outside of the big game Hunter range, too. He's got to play anti heal bot here. Yeah, of course he, he okay. definitely will. There's no question. He's he's been ba he's been baiting it up the entire time. Yeah. He thought about it for a second, but I guess just trying to make sure that he's covering all his bases there. That's a pretty timely flame strike. Well, he's well he already has one. one. Yeah. yeah. Keep in mind that it's nine damage. You know, it's the that will be coming down next turn. The hero power, or the hero power and the weapon from Jirax, that's still 12 damage sitting in the hand. And he doesn't have, like, anti heal bot, duplicate, mm -hmm. echo of Medib, so. And you look at his, his next turn play after the flame strike, it's like ping and then polymorph the new 6 6. Right. Um, and that just. I doesn't seem that strong. He, need, he really needed that Doomsayer to go off. Yeah. But even if it did go off, what would his initiative be on the board? It'd be a big game hunter? He wants to save that. It's handlock. He'd be almost in the exact same spot, except he, he would be taking six less damage the next turn. I guess we found out one of the ways to kill off his fatigue mage is definitely to rush like a Jaraxxus. <laughs> It yeah. just puts too much pressure on If you get your axes out early, it's actually really strong because 6-6 six, six every turn is really problematic. Even decks well, that put out some pressure, quick pressure, I I think don't have as much strength as Drax. Hard to say. But this definitely is a strong point. Okay, well Ancient Watch doesn't really do anything. Would like to see a Mountain Giant come out here. I think he's waited long enough. Yeah. You know your opponent has another big game hunter, though. That's the thing. Well, actually... You might actually hold off. What's the point of holding on to it? Uh, to play something to answer the BGH that yeah. you know is there. But I guess he he would assume that he would have the second 6-6, six, six, even if the BGH the did come out. Sure, sure. Uh, but we will get polymorphed here. So he's hoping that uh, Draxus will take this damage. So he'll be at 7 health, or yeah, after he pings him. Still going to be short a little bit. The Infernals are just starting to rack up too much, though. Shadow Flame to avoid taking damage. Pretty good play so far. Yeah. Um, still looking for a way that maybe Reyna, because I feel like he's hanging in there, but... 
I think Handlock's just getting too far ahead. I feel like attacking the Doomsayer is actually pretty smart here. Kill off any uh, Echo plays. Yeah. Second Frostbolt. Because especially with Lotheb in hand, you, f you feel like you're in a pretty good spot. Uh, so trying just trying to get rid of any way that he could have a comeback. So he can do s uh, seven damage in one turn. So can you do five within the next one? If he plays Blizzard and like, it might just uh, frost, frostbolt face, just to avoid damage. Sure, buy some time. Wait, he does only have two charges of weapon left. Can't believe it's been like five or six turns since your axes came out. Yeah, Twilight Drake. It's just another threat. Um. Surprised that he's not pushing for Lotheb here. He's maybe holding on to it until the very last possible. Yeah, but Lotheb would have done effectively the same thing too. True, true. Protect his minions on board as well. Yeah, I, I think I think he could have sealed a guaranteed win here with Lotheb, but it would have avoided Flame Strike. <laughs> Flame Strike right now is going to be pretty big. Right. That's pretty good. Yeah, but it's a flame strike can clear the board, but he's he's he just has to stall for a little bit more time, right? His fast bolt is just uh, his stall mechanism. It's also three damage that he loses. It's really painful. I think he's okay with pinging because he knows he has the anti kill bot to heal up mm -hmm. the damage from the infernal plus sum next turn. And I think he really needs to save it. He thought about Mortal Coiling his own Infernal there for a second. Knowing it's going to get pinged down, but he don't want to get closer to fatigue. Okay, well, Echo is uh, kind of useless anyways. The, f the Lotheb, though, really problematic because he, uh, he can't actually survive anymore. Because he used to be able to have the mana to frostbolt something. Hey, he's dead. Yeah. So that's going to wrap up game two. And, uh, well, despite the fact that I thought that Fatigue Mage had a pretty good chance against Handlock, forgot about the chances of Draxus really coming yeah. into play here. And that's a good call by Lonely Link to just play it as soon as po he possibly can. And it's like, it's the final push, too. It's like, the fact that Draxus used up all damage of its weapons. And Lonely Link's one game away from going to the Saturday main event. Yeah, he's playing over Raynad. This is the finish line. You can see he's really focused as well. He gave a, a, a quick fist pump in, in celebration there, but uh, definitely focused up and played really well in the first series. Played so well, well this one. One game away from qualifying. That's right. That's right. And, uh, I mean, there is a small cash prize as well for, uh, for every week for the tournament. So $500 prize pool for the top four, I believe. Um, so winning not only guarantees you the spot tomorrow, but it also gives you a little bit of cash. And yeah, so going into game three, uh, we have Priest versus Paladin, and I feel like Lonely Link, it's, he's probably going to win this one 3-0. Um, pretty, there's a pretty strong likelihood. I like, I really like Priest's chance against Paladin. Yeah. I know Paladin can always overwhelm Priest with the quartermaster plays, but... I just really like how Priest is equipped to defeat a lot of uh, what Paladin has um, with Shadow Madness plays. Now that there's a lot of smaller creatures in yep. Paladin, um, you always can mind control Tyrion. You always have really strong abilities because um, to use like Cabal Shadow Priest on good targets. It's a lot of good stuff. Uh, Paladin, you can overwhelm if you get a really strong tempo board lead, but it's a little bit tougher. So I give the edge to Priest here. You can also deny it a turn to Hero Power with a. Northshire Cleric, turn one Northshire That's Cleric. That's true. Right. Just a Northshire Cleric stops your hero powers from yeah. going up. Which, so. it, it's not game changing, but it's just really annoying. The things that with. can change are, of course, uh, big quartermaster boards. Uh, true Server yeah. Champion early on can also dictate the state of the board. 